I just go from one algae to the next algae to the next algae. We had a diatome issue. Then we had a string algae issue, which you'll probably be able to see over here. We started getting some string algae. Now we've got green dust algae and even green water. And that's it. That's all we got in this tank is just algae, algae, algae. It's hard to see. You can't see that. So ironically, it looks pretty good on camera. It looks a lot brighter, but I promise you it's a major green water outbreak. It's just murky. We got biofilm all up on the surface of the water. Just craziness. I don't know. I'm half thinking about just stripping this whole tank down, uh, doing a quick bleach dip on the plants and just replanting and redoing the whole thing. Uh, it's this sand, man. I think I really think it's this sand. It's got so many silicates and phosphates and all kinds of stuff in it. All right, guys, here's what I've decided. I'm going to do a massive clean and plant bleach on this tank. I was going to tear it all the way down, sort the substrate and all of that, but I'm going to give the sand and this tank one last chance to correct itself. And then we're going to just do a complete tear down and a rebuild of it if this doesn't cure the issue. I'm also, of course, going to leave the lights off. So let's get into the tear down. Watch if you want to. I'm going to drain about 80% of the water. I'm going to pull all the plants out. We're going to do a very quick, like 60 second bleach dip on them. Rinse them and dechlorinate them, replant them so the scape might change a little bit, and then slowly fill it back up with RO water and uh, see if we can get the biological system back in check. I don't know. Big tank, big problems, I guess. They tell you big tank, you have less problems because it's more stable, but, you know, not been my experience. So let's do it. Let's start by draining. Power head unplugged. Filter unplugged, heater unplugged. I already have the big LED lights unplugged, CO2 unplugged. And this one is just the small aquarium light for working, work light. Gonna pull the garden hose in here to use as our fast drain. And the water's just gonna drain out back there into the garden. All right, I got a bucket to pull my plants out. We got the siphon going here. We're gonna use the hose to kind of clean up the uh, the tank. If I suck some of that sand out that I don't like, no big deal. Stop, change to the plan. I decided if we're gonna do 80%, we're gonna have all the plants out pretty much anyway to bleach them. All we have is really substrate and this log in there. Let's just do a full rescape. Let's pull all the substrate out. Let's get that sand out of there. Let's put a gravel bed in for better soil aeration. Let's just do it right. Let's do the whole thing over again. So this video got a little bit longer. <laughs> We're going to have to pull all the fish and find all the snails and stuff. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to have to retitle this video. So remember to do that. All right, <laughs> let's fix this tank. All right, we got all the animals in the bucket here with a, a filter and a little air going in there. So they should be good for this whole process. But I wanted to take a moment to show you in the tank here just how much, let me get you all the way down in there. Look at just how much detritus and garbage is in this tank. That's why I just really want to redo it because I need to make this substrate here, um, I guess looser so that the detritus can go to the bottom and uh, not pollute the water column so much. Oh, I found a ghost shrimp, look at that. You probably can't see him, but I found him. So in this bag is the wood piece that has our epiphyte plants glued on it. We went outside, washed everything off, double checked it for snails and stuff, and then uh, put it in this bag to keep it moist. Now I gotta get these plants probably in the kitchen sink because I need this bucket to get this stuff out. 
P.S. She's stinky. All right, so we have this sieve here, and this sieve will not let the substrate go through. But fortunately, I used play sand, and the play sand will go through. Maybe you can see the sand there. Now we have no sand. So I'm just going to use my hose, rinse all this off, and sift this out, put it in the bucket, and then we'll go back and get another load. Whew. Three... Maybe four hours later, she's empty and clean. So I'm gonna redo my plumbing where I want it. We've got our substrate, or our soil rather, sorry, we have our soil here uh, washed and ready. It looks kinda cool. It's a little like black with white freckles in it now. Those are the larger pieces of sand. And then we have our gravel substrate, and that should allow a lot of the organic material to sit under there and get some water flow and hopefully not have this huge detritus issue. And then we've got our piece of wood here. Let's get it back together. Oh, while I'm doing all this, I'm gonna start my RO water drip because we've got almost a day and a half of a RO dripping to do to fill this up. I'm going 100% RO this time, not just gonna go quick with the garden hose. So anyway, time lapse, let's do it. <laughs> All right, there we go. I am going for a center island style in this one here. Now, even though our substrate was rinsed, I don't think we killed every single bit of bacteria. And our, uh, our wood here still probably has bacteria on the plants. Now, I don't think it's going to float anymore. I hope not. But uh, I may weigh it down. I'm going to think about some aquascaping ideas because I'm really winging this. Uh, I'm just freescaping. I have no idea, no plan what I'm going to do. So once I have a plan on this freescape, I'm going to bleach the plants and uh, get the RO water started filling and then start planting. And uh, yeah, you'll see it here uh, coming up. Okay, we are at a stopping point until we get some more water in the aquarium here. So we have pretty much all the epiphytes and a few of the short stems planted. Okay, and this is the reason that we have to uh, wait for so long because our really tall stems, we need some water so that I can fill in all this in the back here and kind of hide our pump and stuff like that. But I want to see where they're going to be and plant them very dense, but I need to see them floating. And then I don't know where I'm going to put this. Maybe over there. 
but we're going to put this in a plastic bag with some water here and uh, they should be good overnight until we get enough water in there. Hi, welcome to the next day. In fact, it's the next evening because my RO system only does 50 gallons per day. So as you can see, we're just about full. So let's finish this scape up and let's get old Billy Bass here uh, back in the tank because he's been in a bucket for 24 hours. Okay, we're going to start by planting our anachronous real heavy in the back here. I'm probably going to trim some of the taller stems uh, and just plant real thick in here. I kind of want like a forest of anachronous over here. Why? I don't know, but mainly to hide that stuff. Man, I didn't know I had this much anachronous. I guess it was just grown in thicker than I thought in the previous scape. I still have all of this here. Because I don't know how much more I can fill in here. I mean, I could pack it in, but is more better or does more look bad? I don't know. Leave a comment. Let me know. Would you have done more? Keep putting this in here or leave it alone? Or would you have gone thinner? Let me know what you pros are doing. Nope, I'm not happy. Looks like garbage to me. I really liked this center framed island. This is beautiful. This just looks all scraggly. So I'm going to pull it all up, I'm going to put it in a bunch, and I'm going to stick it in the corner and try and compact it more into that corner right there. See if I like it better. If not, it all comes out. Yes, much better. I think I'll leave it there, not rip it out. Gives uh, our bass, you know, kind of an alley to swim around this island, and we're maintaining kind of that island. Oh, sorry, my, my tripod's in the way. Real YouTube here. Um, yeah, so see, kind of keeps the island theme there. So I'm going to do the same in this corner, make some adjustments here. And there's our little pop of green in the corner. Now I didn't have too much of this, unlike the Anacharis, but I think it will, uh, you know, do its thing, grow, and we'll trim it and plant it and see if we can spread it out a little bit. It's right in the flow. So I don't know how it's going to look. We're going to turn the pump on here in just a second. But here we are with our finished rescape. I think I forgot to mention here the Monte Carlo in the front. Hopefully that carpet's out. If you could imagine a nice green carpet spreading all over the place. I hope so. I haven't had really good luck with Monte Carlo. But we have a second light now. So we have bigger, more powerful lighting. And hopefully that helps out. But there we have it guys, the full scape, and uh, I'm going to start acclimating old uh, Billy Bass Thornton here. Since this poor guy's been in a bucket for 24 hours, so let's get him and the snails and whatever minnows may be left that he didn't eat. And let's get them back into their permanent home. Forgot to mention we are going to remineralize the water here. Pure RO is great for plants, but the fish need a little bit of mineral and stuff like that for their slime coat, I think. So... We're going to remineralize re as uh, suggested, and then we will acclimate them. All right, guys, Billy here's in his final acclimation, and uh, we're getting ready to dump him in. So I'm going to set the camera up, see if we can get one of those cool release shots we can do in slow-mo.
All right, full disclosure, uh, came home from work one day later after planting, and all of the inocarus is like snow white. Uh, it's the first time I've done a bleach dip on inocarus, and pro tip, don't do it, even for 60 seconds, because it did not like it at all. All the rest of the plants were also bleached for the same 60 seconds, and they're fine. But all of this here is going to have to come out because this is going to just start rotting and cause a severe bio load. And uh, yeah, we just spent a whole bunch of time cleaning this tank. We're not going to let this rotting anachorus ruin our tank. So I'm going to take it out, but I thought I would interject this update for you. So you got the full story and the full disclosure. Hello, Billy Bass. Could you move, please? I'm trying to show the people this blank corner here. No? You're going to float right into my shot, huh? Alright, well, you guys can see this corner over here is now barren. But don't you fret. We got a bunch of new plants from our local fish shop and some new forceps to plant them. So let's get these in the tank, make that corner look a little bit better. Alright guys, what are we thinking here, huh? I know the uh, rock line is not very natural, but uh, if I get some more substrate, some different rocks or something, we can play with it later on, but I gotta let it grow in. But we've got, I don't know, just kind of a weird little hole right here that I don't like. It just looks a little plain over here. So that's why we got this guy. The uh, Blue Water Zoo there gave me this little plant. We think it's a Sagittaria, but uh, we're not quite sure 100%. This came from a customer. Um, I drop off plants there that I've got too many of, like my red root floaters and stuff, and a customer dropped this uh, bunch of this off. So I said, hey, give me a, a clump of it. We'll try it out, see if it's the same. I'm going to set it back here just to give a little bit of leafiness. Does that make sense? Leafiness? Yeah, a little leafiness. Yeah, there we go. Leafiness. That's definitely the terminology. See? Just a little leafiness there. Even Billy likes it. Cruising right underneath there. Yeah. Alright, now for a special treat at the end of this video here, since it was a long one, we're going to add a bunch of ghost shrimp and uh, watch Billy go nuts. It's his favorite snack is ghost shrimp. We got him five dozen ghost shrimp. So uh, he may eat one for you on camera. Let's uh, put him in and find out. So what's really interesting here, guys, is he can smell them. I've been watching him uh, eat these shrimp, and he knows they're in there. So once he gets their scent, he'll he'll nose down and start kind of puffing onto the soil. He sees one right there. But he'll puff on the soil, and if they move, he'll suck them up. It's hard for me to get Billy to eat on camera because he sees the camera moving. Well, guys, I hate to disappoint it looks like uh, we're not going to get one on camera here. Billy's lights are auto dimming. So we're going to have to close it out here. And uh, I apologize you didn't get to see him eat. But we'll let the plants uh, settle in at the nighttime here. And uh, we'll definitely get some footage of him eating for you guys. Don't you worry. we got plenty of time to get all kinds of stuff on camera. All right, well, as you can see, Billy's light is off. I appreciate you guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully it was entertaining for you. The uh, Bass Tank update, whew, what uh, an amazing adventure trying to get that whole thing drained and cleaned and rescaped. And my goodness, it was a multi-day, almost a week project now. Anyway, I'm rambling and you've already had enough content, so we're going to close the video out. But before we go, I want to say thank you guys uh, for being a subscriber. You guys are growing the channel much faster than I thought we were going to grow. So I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next update.